Okay, we're on our second video clip now having to do with short-term fluctuations on our economy. So this is part two uh, as a follow-up to part one of our fluctuations. In this clip we're going to be talking about what happens when something other than income changes and how that affects our consumption, our spending, and so on. So what does affect income what does affect consumption other than income? Well, one thing is changes in wealth. If we are wealthier, have more assets, or even if we think we are wealthier, it's going to change how we consume things. It's particularly true, particularly sort of relevant um, for people who have 401k retirement plans or maybe a portfolio of stock where they've been saving and as the value of that 401k or the value of that stock portfolio increases, we feel wealthier. Now, it's a paper wealth, but nonetheless, people feel wealthier and they're likely to spend more. The reverse is also true, and this has been uh, apparent in the 2007 through 2009 recession, as stock portfolios and 401k plans have dropped significantly in value, people have felt less wealthy and as a result have spent less. The other thing that can affect consumption is changes in expectations, what we think about the future. If we're largely bullish on the future and think that things are going to get better, we're likely to increase our spending, even if we don't actually see a change in our income right now. If we expect to do better, we'll spend more. Conversely, if we think things are going to hell in a handbasket and we're expecting to be laid off or things to get worse in the future, even though that hasn't happened yet, we're likely to spend less. Now here's an example of our chart that we first got introduced to when we were um, looking at um, uh, fluctuations. The blue line, as you'll recall, is a line of consumption that, that it shows how consumption changes with changes in income. There you go, that's the blue line we've had before. The green line represents an, an increase in wealth. So. What it really does, if you're following the formula here, what it really does is changes the constant. It was originally at 2, now that constant's up to 3. So this is, as you can see, this is kind of a parallel shift that means that if, in general, if people are feeling more wealthy, then uh, they'll spend more at various levels of, um, of income. Now, other things can affect uh, consumption other than income, wealth, and expectations. And primarily, and this is important for us as we're looking at the policy implications of all of this, the, the two important, a couple of important things that can change how we spend is one, changes in government spending. Uh, government spending is an element of, of GDP, and if that changes significantly through a fiscal stimulus, for instance, uh, or a cutback in federal spending, then that's going to change our consumption function, our line on the graph. The same thing can happen if, if business and personal investments change. Um, if uh, companies are bullish on the future, start investing in um, new equipment, new R&D and so on, then they're going to spend more through investments and that's going to raise GDP. Or vice versa, if they're concerned about the future and they pull back on their investments, then it can drop. We can see this on the graph in the same way as we saw the change in wealth. Now what we're looking at is a shift. Here's our original blue line. Now we're looking at a shift going up as a result, in this case, of an increase in government spending. So let's say Congress decides to bump up spending, either to fight an overseas war or to uh, provide more uh, stimulus for jobs, whatever. If, if government changes their spending upwards then what we would see is this increase to uh, the, from the blue line up to the red line. Now this chart gets a little bit more complicated but let's see if we can walk through it. Here's our original blue line that's that was our consumption function originally and now this darker purple line is the one that represents the increase in government spending. So there's been an increase in um, uh, increase in consumption, increase in spending as a result. That shift upwards from the blue to the to the sort of purple line represents the actual amount of additional government spending that has taken place. Now you may remember from our first video clip that there's a 
equilibrium point where this original consumption function, this blue line, hit this identity line, this one that says that income needs to equal output or needs to equal spending. And we had a, an equilibrium, a crossover point that was right at about a level of five. Now, with government spending going up, you'll see that the new place where these two cross is way up here at a level of about just shy of seven and a half. And what that represents is where GDP will be as a result of government spending. So it says, as the note says here, this is a big change. This is almost magic. And the fact that our actual GDP, our actual output, also our actual income, would increase by, let's say, two and a half units from five to seven and a half, even though government spending only went up by one unit from two to three. How could that be? Well, think of it this way. Think of a um, uh, the government, the Defense Department, placing an order for combat boots for a small factory, let's say, in the middle of Indiana that uh, makes combat boots uh, for the military. And they place a big order and, uh, let's say, $50 million worth and that uh, $50 million is an increase in government spending. So that's a shift from the blue line up to the red line. Now, um, so that's the first impact on GDP is just that increase in government spending. But once that factory gets that order for all those boots, they have to hire more people. They have to buy more supplies. Uh, the people they hire or the folks who have to work more overtime are going to have more income. And they're going to use that money and go out and spend it on a new flat screen TV or new digital camera, uh, they're going to spend it in a variety of ways. Now, if you remember, they're going to spend it only probably, our estimate here is maybe they'd only spend about 60% of it, 0.6. Um, but nonetheless, they would spend it. And so that, that extra spending, that extra economic activity gets added onto what the government is doing. So the, so the sort of magic here is that this, the original sort of one unit increase in government spending represented by the height of the difference between these two lines translates into a two and a half level increase of, um, of GDP uh, from one equilibrium point to the other. Now, we call this the multiplier. And there's actually quite a bit of controversy over it about what the multiplier really is. Here it seems pretty high. We have a one unit increase in government spending with a two and a half unit increase in GDP. That would say a multiplier of 2.5. 2.5 for every one increase in government spending. Now, as it turns out, uh, although in theory it could, the multiplier could be that higher, even higher, in practice it has not seemed to be that and in fact when the federal government and all the advisors and the second guessers were trying to decide how the US government should overcome the recession of 2008 and 2009 uh, there was a lot of question about just what the multiplier was how much of an increase would be caused by an increase in federal spending some of it depends on what sort of projects the federal government uh, spends it on uh, but when it comes right down to it, the, the empirical or the real data on multipliers is a mixed bag. And probably we're overstating it here for just purposes of looking. This 2.5 uh, multiplier that is impaired in this graph is probably too high. Uh, multipliers probably range from oh, 1.1 to maybe 2 at the best. But nonetheless, it does mean that an increase in government spending can be leveraged and multiplied by some factor in terms of growing GDP. Um, the same can be true if all of a sudden there is an increase in investments. If, uh, if credit markets improve and make it easier for businesses to borrow money to invest or uh, other credit facilities open up, 